Hey guys, you're watching the best damn pools of the week. I am Gian Perez with me as always, Mr. Cat Drew. Hey guys, you're watching the best damn comic show and today we're gonna to teach you how to set up a booth at a comic book convention. Cat and I just did the Pasadena Comic Con this weekend. New setup, because we were in a new room. New room. And we had to kind of figure out a way to, to maximize our space and get out the most amount of product possible. But also, on top of it, before we get started on the actual setup, Want to let you guys know if you're gonna do something like that, always make sure to know who your audience is, who's showing up to these things. Because, for example, Kat, you did really well this weekend selling stuff like this, like these old Star KB Wars, toy yeah. Star Wars figures, five bucks a pop, you know, mini mates, whatever, cheap stuff. At this kind of show, a local smaller show, you know, it's not smart to bring, for example, you should always bring stuff like this, like just to get oohs and ahs. Yeah, like this, this is this is what draws people to your booth. This is the first appearance. But of nobody's gonna have money for that. But yeah, more than more than likely, you're not gonna get the type of buyer who's gonna drop. How much are you asking for this? Six grand. There you go. <laughs> you're probably yeah, not gonna, not gonna find them. someone that has six grand to drop at this show for this. You might every you get lucky I mean, you every get, so often. Do. You get somebody you that, right. that comes in, but. For the, the most odds, part, yeah. you want to stock your booth with with cheap little things like this. You know, five to ten bucks. Dollar toys, books, two dollar, dollar books. You like know. I said, I was working on two dollar variant boxes, which I didn't go crazy with. But again, always know your environment. I mean, pay a you know, just because you see a convention. Okay, let me look at why, right. where, who. Pay attention to the name of the show. I've had failed experiences with. There's another show thrown by the same promoter called the Robo Toy Show. I don't have any robot toys. I don't have Transformers. I don't have the Japanese, like, Macross, whatever, whatever. I don't have that. I don't have that much either, but collection. I still do these. I mean, again, it's a chance. Cause, and, and sometimes what works is because everybody's going to have the same thing because it's a robo show, having that odd piece might work. It might. You know. It might. I don't have a lot of Transformers, and I always do it, and I do all right. Right, but you did what with the G.I. Joes. True, I had the G.I. Joe. Because it was like Robo Toy Show, G.I. Yeah, Joe show. Oh, that's right, because well. they had yeah. it in the other room. So Pay attention to that. Yeah, like, definitely. You gotta know, if this is an action figure show, you're probably not gonna do good selling books, like selling novels. If you can pull, you know, bring a couple boxes of dollar books to see what happens, but try to figure out what, what your audience is, because nine times out of 10, if, you, if you're bringing the wrong stuff, you're not gonna make any money, you're gonna get out of there, you're wasting your entire day, you're gonna- Exactly, yeah. Out. Now, setting up, we, we had an experience this weekend. We're in a new ballroom, we've done this convention, this is my fourth time, this is your third time, I believe. Fourth time, yeah, third yeah. or fourth, yeah. Brand new space, and uh, you know, in the previous hall, we had an eight by eight room to work with, I believe, you know, and um, the depth alone helps set up tables, you know, give you the room to where people can actually come in and look at your 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 stuff. Six by eight, and the cost was up, but we didn't have much room to work with. So we had to get clever, and we got clever. We did, so let's 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 get a setup. Like, there's so, different ways to do it. Now, now. So like in this instance, like, our setup was we were against the wall. So you got, that was the wall, and they gave us, and you worked that well because you had the door, so you were able to probably even get a few more feet because the sliding door gave you another two well, feet. Well, that's the thing. Like, when you're when you're picking your spot, always look at the map and see, like, look for corners. If you can get a corner spot, like, actually, one of Kat's old friends got yeah. a corner spot. He was lucky to have that corner because right. he, he was able to work it really nice. You know, but, like, for us, we had an eight-foot table but the depth between the wall and the table was six feet. So we, I, there was nothing I can do because I, I brought two six foot tables and literally when you gotta that take was into, my setup. You gotta take into, uh, into, into account that the table is wide as well. So even right, though that's it's, six, two it's foot. six feet from the wall, but the table itself is two at feet. least two feet, right. if not a little So, so I brought three tables. So what I did was I moved the table that they provided, the eight foot table, I moved it against the wall. And then I had the one walkway. I put a six foot table here and then another six foot table here, which gave me this U, sideways U. I could have, I mean, it was just enough room for me to work, to walk this here to give product, but there was nothing else. Right. But I made it work. And it's like, you have to get clever with your, with your pick, with your setup. Which you want to provide people access to your product. Viewers, I mean, they, you gotta, yeah. even if they can't reach, they gotta be able, gotta to, be able to see it. it. Exactly. You know? Like, my wife came later and kept telling me to sit down. 
because your Which fat ass was blocking everything. Because I was standing up and blocking the stuff that I had set up behind me because of how cramped it was. Like normally, Don't what blame we it have on the space. Is it, call it for what it is, you're a big guy. Like I said, anyways, because this guy's this guy's a bean pole over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> normally, we have the corner spot where we have an L kind of set up, and if you want to draw the L set up that we we normally get. So, so the previous ballroom, and I asked him if we're gonna be the same space. He said, I don't know yet. They might put us back, but we usually when we do the other, uh, we have this corner here, and then there's like a divider. So the divider alone provides us with that eight foot space to where we can set up between me, Patrick, George, and you, we have a nice L shape and it's spacious, but that's that one ballroom, you know, so we were able to work with that. A lot of shows now, they're shrinking space, money's going up, so where before you had at least to smaller shows before you, you were able to get like an eight by 10 or 10 by 10. Now it's, you're not getting that anymore with smaller shows. You're getting eight by eight. In our instance, we got six by eight. So you gotta right. definitely be real clever with, with setup. What I did for this show was because I had kind of an end, I got kind of messed, I got kind of screwed because there was a roll up door behind me. So while setup was happening, everybody was bringing their stuff in right next to me and I couldn't get my, my so, things. So this was his setup, that was the wall, my six, eight feet ended here and then Gian had this to work with. So again, it was pretty much the same setup, you know, had a table here, he had a table here, but then he was able to use, the, the once the door closed, the depth he was able to use the the support. I was able to push it back a little bit to give me a little bit more no. comfort for me to, to, to move around. But also, this is key right here because this was an open area. Yeah, this was open and then this is where where our Roz was with his corner area. So you had you had your dollar table right here, which would all books some people yeah. like they were So if you see I had this whole area right here wide open for people to walk over comfortably and look through all the books. And I had people there, I think that's really why I made a, a decent amount of money because there was people at my table for like an hour, hour and a half going through every, through single, every book single box. Because yeah. they were comfortable. They were able to move around Without. and not feel cramped. They didn't have people coming behind them, looking Which over their me, shoulder. Which for me, I had my four boxes here and and it was like because everybody was waiting. it was in the middle waiting. of the walkway. Yeah. It was in the middle of the walkway. So, so there's, a, again, there's a strategy to all this stuff. Like, you know, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta location, play. location, location. I mean, I, I do, like I do the set the small show. It's uh, it's called the Claremont Packing House. I set up in front of the shop, so I have this. I have room for two tables, actually, two six footers, eight footers, and then I have here and here. So this is my wall. I can walk in, but. I line up with this show, I particularly just line up with dollar boxes and variant boxes. So people are able to, like in your like in your situation, yeah. they're able to walk, sit here and look to where there's room here for others to walk. There's another guy here. So there's room on both ends for, for people to to flip their boxes. And I make, you know, it's a good, right. when, when people have that room, that freedom to look, especially if you bring dollar boxes, I mean, you, you yourselves could, could be solid. You know, so that's another that's another setup. Now these are the smaller shows. Right. Now when you get to the bigger games, the Wonder Cons, the Comic Cons, the Comic. Well, let's 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 let, let me ask you a question before we get to that. How much do you think the look of your setup helps you with sales? Like you, obviously, Patrick, George, and I, we're we're part timers. We're just doing this kind of to make a little bit of extra money. But this is this is what you do. How much do you think having grids and having a really clean, professional looking oh, set helps. helps you with sales? It, it helps because like with grids, I mean, against all, I'm able to put back issues like, you know, recent hot books, you know, some CGCs. And that's the stuff you want. You don't need that in the boxes. You want the, you're, you know, you want it to look pretty. So if somebody walks by your booth, you're like, oh, when it's too crowded, you know, you, you miss things. Yeah. So you have to be selective what you bring and you have to display it. I mean, you, you know, you, it has to be visible. And right. visibility plays a key factor on selling the product. And getting these grids helps with that because you're able to set it up the way you want to and it, have like rigid stuff that like holds up. That's, that's really what it comes down to more than anything is like, you get these fly-by-night things where they're just kind of throwing boxes up here and there. And I, I just like, it's like shopping at Ross or Marshalls or TJ Maxx. Yeah, like some people are okay with 
going into the mess to find the steals, but other people, they see it and automatically, I noticed that I had a bunch of loose figures and this year, I, I, what I normally do is I put them in a bucket and I let people sort through the bucket. This year, I said, you, you know what? I'm going to throw them out on the table and see what happens. I don't know if that helped or, or, or hurt. I, I, I think it kind of hurt more. I don't feel like I sold that many of those loose figs this year because people were intimidated by the pile. Right, like, rather, you know but it's the same thing. But I guess but for some reason, I, it's seeing, the mentality. It's mentality. It's, seeing the bucket. Well, so let me look. Let me look. Let me dig. Exactly. So it's digging for that bucket, you know. So it's making know, people think like they're gonna find this. Like, look, it's a it's a steal. guessing game. I mean, I right. mean, you look around. You know, everybody has, you know, vendors that are that are selling a, a product and this like a brand. Their setup is much different than comic book dealer where we have to unload stuff. Yeah. You know, so. You, you know, you look around the room, you're like, this guy's got a setup. And there's guys that have been doing it a lot longer than I have, a lot longer than you have. And they have a system. So every show is the same right. setup to where if you've bought from him once, it's that repetitiveness to you or you know what to expect. So it's right. easy. So that's another thing. I mean, I saw guys unloading their trucks. I like, mean, it was like, yeah, and there's they had, one they jump. They had the cases already uh, packed, with, yeah. Like, like saran wrapped, wrapped, saran yeah. wrapped around to make sure it didn't move. Oh yeah. They unloaded the. They had moving trucks. Unload the moving trucks. Push it right push out. Push it in. Boom, wheels ready to done. Go. Yeah, I know. Good to go. So everybody's got a. Everybody's got a different system. Again, and it's based on the product you sell. Right. You know, I mean, those guys are mostly toy guys. So yeah, it makes sense to have it on these rolling shelves. The nice steel ones from Costco, you know, you just put them in wheels, surround wrap it. You know, you know they're not gonna move. Right. Put them out, done. You set up your, you make your cage just on those, right. with those exactly. those shelves. So everybody's different. Now you tell know. us about the, the the bigger shows that you're. Well, with the cons. bigger shows, you know, at that point. Well, you do you, the Ontario. I'm one. doing the Ontario, but at that point, you know, it, it's a little bit more professional, you know, and. Their, their measurements are set up so you get a 10 by 10. I mean, they work with the bigger shows, they work on 10 by 10s, 10 by 20s, 20 by 20s, so forth, you know. Um, I don't, against the walls, I don't, I don't know how it is against the wall, but I believe you have a lot more room. Even mm -hmm. with Artist Alley and the smaller aisles, you have pretty good size room. And I, like for me, when I set up at at Comic Con Revolution, I have a 20 by 20, so I have a cage, an island. So I usually. And I mean, these shows, I, I will tell you, as, a, as someone that goes to, to buy at these shows or to go and hang out at these shows, they make sure that there's room for people to walk around. So you oh, don't yeah, deal the, with the same traffic. kind of cramping that you get at the smaller shows. You know, you, you, know? you know, you get between, you know, where a smaller show, you get what, 200 people, 300 if you're lucky. Right. You know, 200 if you're lucky, but at these bigger shows, I mean, you're expecting thousands. sales in the thousands. Yeah. So you better have the, the space for it. But like I said, for me at the at, at Comic Revolution, you know, this is the main entrance. One of the main entrances, there are about three. I'm one aisle in, you walk in, I got a 20 by 20, I'm right there. I started with the 10 by 20. I was like, okay, not enough room though. The amount of product I have, mm. not enough room. So the following year, I took a chance and I said, let me have a 20 by 20. But then a friend of mine said, hey, I, I need somebody to get in show. Can you ride with you? So I said, okay. So I gave him a 10 by 10. So my space. So my space was this. So it was a little bit awkward, it was an L, so you had, I had to get clever. Okay, what goes here? What goes here for people to have a right. flow through? The, so, but I made it work. It was a great show. The following year, which was last year, you know, Patrick and George wanted to attend it. So I said, okay. So again, same setup. I have a 20 by 20. Um, so I gave them, instead of doing the 10 by 10 like I did it's it the year like before, yeah. I, I decided to do, to give them like this. So, so I still had a cage. I had an open square. Right. I, blew up, I lost 20, you know, 10 feet, whatever, but they were able to, they were able to, dis so rather than I have a 10 by 10 where, okay, how do we do it? How do we set up? I set up here, you set up here. Uh, maybe I have they this wall. They used the back of your cage They used the back of the, and they both were able, their product was in plain view. So when you took, when you went this way, this way, you came from here, their product was on full blast view, right. you know what I mean? So. They were able, and then again, when you walk into my booth, because this was 
this was open. So I had a U, I had product lined up everywhere. I had stuff here. So, you know, I had this flow, you know, where right. you walk through and, and you get to see everything. Like a mini store is basically Like a mini it store, yeah. This year, this year I'm probably gonna be by myself. So my, okay, now that I'm by myself, like how do I design this 20 by 20? So I, I, I have a few designs in mind to where you know, instead of having to close, I have two open ends, you know. So, so I'm, pl I'm gonna play between now and the setup. I'm gonna play with how I wanna set up since I'm gonna be by myself. Right. You know, to Let where- Let me ask you something. Do you set up stuff on the outside of the cage as well? Uh, depending uh, if I can see it, you know, cause I right. do have the grids and I usually, I usually get the small hooks and I put up action figures on the wall. I don't put anything else. Yeah. You know, so it all depends on, and what I'll do too, I might move it in about a half a foot. I'll, I'll, I have I have these one footer grids, so I'll stop and then I'll close it in and then do this to where it doesn't, because they do have regulations with fire marshal. You can't have stuff sticking out on the aisle, right. blah, blah, blah. You gotta be contained within you the know, space. So, so, I mean, the higher the shelf, I mean, obviously, unless you're like, I mean, I'm 6'3", and I put stuff up about seven because my grids are eight. I'll, like I said, I'll move it at some point. I'll have it flush, but then I'll move it in about a foot and create a little dip in the wall right. to where it's flush with, with the, you know, the, the my eye, my regulation, and then I tarp it up. When I tarp it, I tarp it from that point around, you know, block it up. So there's 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 ways, and it, and you get like these big shows. You get guy. I mean, you get some really cool depending on the space, cool creative setups. Cause again, the room is a lot larger right. to work with, you know. When you got to make it attractive for potential And you have to, I mean, well. even inside, yeah. I mean, you have, and that's that's the biggest thing with these shows is, is figuring out how to display it to where it's visible, it's pleasant, it doesn't look crowded, you know. I mean, I know I don't have the best store, you know, I'm not, you know, but I get a lot of compliments when people come in and they say, hey, man, I always feel like it's a mess, but people are like, dude, this is the widest, like the cleanest store in the sense that they can see the product. Right. And visibility is key rather than throwing everything in there and nobody wants to look through it. Easier you make it for- For everybody. For everybody, it just, the more, the, the, you're, the more successful you're probably gonna be. Well, yeah, it's you know, because really, people will walk yeah. in and they'll be like, they see it, they see, it, they see your booth is clean, they see the product displayed properly, then they know what they're buying. Right. They know they're gonna buy quality product where you know you go into some people's booth and everything just so packed, thrown, mess. It's like overwhelming and it, it kind of it's nerve wracking. Any strategies on new shows that you haven't worked at before? Like, wh how, what do you like suggest to people to to do? Like, like we're doing a, we're doing a show in Simi Valley in a, in a few weeks. Is it is it Scott's show too? I, it's Scott's show. So we know the we know the so, promoter we're dealing with, but it's a new sp a spot. We've never been there. We don't know the people that. Are same thing. I mean, again, it's but I would have I would do I would treat it the same as we do all his shows because you know what he's gonna give you. So again, paying attention with the promoter that you deal with you know, is key, you know, so, you know, you should be fine. Right. But, but you know, you're probably gonna get an eight foot table too. You're gonna get an eight foot table, definitely. Oh, you know what, actually, let me ask you something. So this year, because it's a, we've never done this show, we got in late, we have inline tables. What do you recommend for inline tables? What's an inline table? An inline table means it's not against the wall, it's in the middle. So you don't have that back that you normally would with then, the wall. Then get those, get yourself some plastic shelves. Get those, those stackable shelves. Create, give yourself a background behind you. Not one, not, get a few, you know, start shopping around, get at least two or three of those that way, you know, cause again, if you're getting a eight foot table, you know, these shelves are what, about two feet wide. I mean, you, yeah. you know, don't go flush with the table, but have at least three to where you create like, you know, you, you have, so, so, this is your eight foot table. You do, you do three of those shelves. You're, you're stacked. You got your cheap stuff here. And then your shelves are gonna be your, your ticket items. Right. And the shelves will be clean enough, you know, to where, I mean, it'll be clean enough to where you can stack these products. I mean, I saw you had that pegboard too. 
figure out a way to maybe so that way you can hang stuff you know i mean it's going to be difficult not having that back wall support it's it's going to be difficult to set up a really cool way it's doable right you know but yeah i, I i've never done a show i mean i've organized show to where the inline but i'm i i always when i have that i put artists in those tables yeah i don't put vendors vendors need support neither the wall or or you know or a backdrop so if you notice when i do that when i did the high school show all my vendors were against the wall so they could use the wall for right. support and what i had in the middle because the gym it was tiny i know i put all the creators that came with their little backdrops they didn't need a wall right because they're not hanging stuff. they're not yeah. yeah they're just the you know they come with easels they put up all their artwork so I was I worked it for the vendor rather you know what I mean for the yeah. for the dealer so right. every everything's different you know everybody operates it differently you know but you know you have that experience you know just I mean and again if your first show uh, you've been to many shows you've seen all kinds of setups pay attention Pay I, I yeah. tell my pet, it's still free. Pay attention, you know, pay attention to everybody's setup and come up with what works for you. And you'll be fine. All right, guys, thanks for sticking through to the end of the video. If you want an opportunity to win one of these packs right here, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video. Just do it. For one opportunity. And if you want multiple opportunities, make sure to follow us on Instagram and leave a comment as well. Free on toys, man. Picture. Free toys. Free stuff, you don't have guys. To, there's nothing. There's no commit. Just push a button. That's it. That's it. Click. But thanks for watching this week. We'll catch you next time. Cat takes away. See you guys in the comic book store. A new year. Same resolution. Go in, pick up your books. Keep print alive. Keep the comic book stores alive. See you guys in the comic book store.